Hello everyone, George here, and we are going to tackle the usage meter that's going to be connected to the Vive controllers. Now to do this, I want to take just a few seconds to clarify how it's going to work. So of course, at the moment, we have a power manager, and that power manager has uh, some functionality that lets it talk to the uh, powered objects. That is the door and, of course, lights and anything else that we decide to use in the future, including the security cameras. We can uh, set, or excuse me, use power and unuse power. And the idea is that the power manager will then determine how much power it's using at any particular time and then reduce or increase that rate by these powered objects. Now, the power manager will tell every powered object to deactivate itself uh, when it has zero power. And that is, of course, when there's just no power left. It does so by finding all the powered objects and then, of course, indicating to them, hey, uh, you know, we have nothing left. We have this system already in use, and it makes sense to use this system for our power usage system. So the first thing we're going to do is actually create a game object, which is going to end up holding all of the different uh, bars we've created. Now, we created a relatively arbitrary amount. I believe it was something like eight in the previous video. But the idea is it's going to hold that information. We're going to um, transform these just inside of Unity so they're all spaced out properly. I believe inside of Maya, I just happened to leave them all at the origin because I wasn't sure how I was going to handle it at the time. We're going to space them all out, and the power manager is going to get access to a new object called the um, power usage graphic. And the idea behind the power usage graphic is it's just going to hold a reference to all these different objects. It's going to do so through an array. Uh, that way we can just use the length of the thing to determine um, how many we currently have. That way if we decide to maybe nix a few of these, get rid of them, and have fewer of these power bars, we can in the future. So the array is really nice and versatile in that way. We don't have a hard number we've attached to it. We're going to, of course, have a function called set usage. And set usage is just going to take an int value, and it's going to indicate um, how many of these bars we should actually be turning on. And of course, we're going to do some checking just to make sure that this integer value here is going to, of course, be um, greater than zero, but less than the actual length of the array, which would pose a problem for us. All right, so let's jump into Unity and uh, get this all done. Okay, so here we are inside of Unity. Let's go ahead and find the graphic that we had made last time, the usage graphic, drag that into our scene, frame on up, and uh, make sure it's at zero, zero, zero. The usage graphic itself is going to be bound to the, uh, the Vive controller that we're dealing with. But before we get into that, let us rotate around to find the different elements. There's zero through four which I'm just going to move off to the side ever so slightly. And there's five through eight. We're going to move them off ever so slightly as well. Whereas the zero point is about there, so I'm just slightly off. But anyway, what we're going to do now is just move these and try our best to evenly distribute them. We could do this, of course, through code, but uh, I just don't feel like doing that at the moment. So here we are. That's pretty close. Let's go ahead. There's four. Four should be right there. There's five. And then, of course, 6, which will come right after it, 7 and 8. And 8. There we are. Now let's go ahead and create a new script. Let's go to Scripts, right-click, Create, C-sharp Script, and let's call this Power Usage Graphic. There we are. Power Usage Graphic, attach it to the main element. Cannot add script because it's not the right name. Let's go ahead and check it out. So Power Usage Graphic is the name. Power usage graphic, that is the correct name. Close this on out. Figure out why it's giving me crap. Clear. Move that there. There we are. So power usage graphic is now attached to that object. Let's go ahead into the camera manager. Find the uh, camera, camera system. Find the left controller. Put this under the left controller, much like all the other things we're dealing with. But let's zero some things out real quick. So zero, zero, and zero. Frame on up. Take a look at it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is put that power usage right around there. Move it on up. Let's rotate this so we can see it. There we are. Now that is negative 90, 180, 180. We're now going to rotate this around this way so it shows up properly. Give this a negative 180. And a 360 is fine. And of course, just transform it somewhere into the center, somewhere around there. Our Z value is a little off. So let's copy one of these objects, Z values, there we are, and paste that. Whoops, not Z, excuse me. 
probably Y for this, right? Nope. Let's go to global. There we are. And let's grab the power graphics Y value and the usage graphic and paste and enter. And now they should be on the same plane, which is perfect for us. So let's see, zero, somewhere around that, I'm guessing. Yeah, let's center it right. We'll keep it like that. Save. Okay, now that we have that set up, let's jump into code. So let's double click our power usage graphic. All right, so here we are. We're not going to have an update function for this, so we might as well go ahead and remove that, save it. Now the power usage graphic is going to use an array. So let's do a public game object, and not game manager, game object. It's going to be an array, and we're just going to call this bars. Bars is going to be populated over here, so let's go ahead and find our usage graphic. Now we could, of course, grab these by name, find children, all sorts of different things, but for right now, we're just going to do it this way. And I'm going to grab each element and put them in as I see fit. Three, four. All right, so there we are. We have our array populated. We'll come back over here. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure we turn all of these bars off. So we're going to want to increment over each one and do that. So let's do int i is equal to zero. i is less than bars dot length. i plus plus bars i dot dot set active false. All right, that'll turn off all the bars for us. So that's easy enough. Now we want to create a public method that uh, other classes, specifically the power manager, is going to use to set the number of bars that we have. So we're just going to do set bars. Set bars is going to take into it an integer value. Let's call this number of bars to be clear. Public void. We don't need to return anything. So public void set bars. First thing we want to do is make sure that the number of bars is greater than zero. So let's do an if number of bars is less than zero. So let's just go ahead and set the number of bars equal to zero. Next up, we want to see if the number of bars is actually greater than the bars we actually have. So let's do dot length, excuse me, number of bars is greater than or equal to the bars dot length is going to be equal to bars dot length minus one. Okay, so now that we've passed all that, it's up for us to uh, activate those bars. So the first thing we want to do, and, and we're only doing this because this is really not a critical thing. It's only going to happen not terribly often in the game. We don't need to worry about performance with this particular part. So we're going to go ahead and turn off all of the bars, and then we're going to turn on those that need to be turned on. We could, if this was a more resource intensive type thing, we could of course go into a little bit more logic and determine, you know, exactly which ones we should be turning off. But this is fast and easy and just, it's, 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 it's going to work for us. So let's just do int i is equal to zero. i is less than the uh, number of bars dot. i is less than the bars dot length i plus plus. And we're going to do bars i dot set active false. There we are. False. There we are. Wrong language. False. There we are. Now we're going to increment over every one that uh, well is actually active and make that work. So we're going to set bars set active true and we're not going to increment over every single bar. Instead we're going to increment over the number of bars. So the number of bars, if it's zero, what's going to happen is everything gets deactivated. We come inside of here. I less than that. Therefore, zero is not less than zero. Therefore, nothing will be activated. So now down here in our loop, if we have eight bars activated, it's going to come up through here. This is going to pass just fine. Our number of bars is going to be eight in that case. Everything gets deactivated. That is zero through seven is going to be deactivated in here. Our value is 8, therefore we're going to go up to, but not including 8, and we're going to deactivate uh, 0, excuse me, we're going to activate 0 through 7, which will be the 8th element. And that should be it for us. Let's go ahead and save this. Now that uh, everything seems to be okay, uh, we need to modify the power manager next. So let's open that up. Inside of the power manager, we have three areas we need to um, improve. The first is the update function. So within the power manager, we need to make a small change. So right now we have this float power sync, which is a floating point value. And 
right now we have this sort of detachment, at least with how I'm dealing with things, between the integer value, that is the, uh, the usage value, and the actual amount of power we're drawing down. Now, this kind of makes things a little bit, um, well, it, it just, it, it breaks how much power an object is using from the actual power meter. And that's something I might want to change in the future. But for right now, every time an object decides to uh, use power, we're just going to increase the usage power itself instead of having some sort of a uh, range that we'll be working with. So let's do int use usage is equal to zero right off the bat. Now usage is going to be incremented whenever power gets used. So let's do usage plus equals one. And when power is released, we're going to do usage minus equals one. There we are. Okay, so now we need to tell, actually, uh, we need to do usage in here too. So if we run into the case where uh, we have no charge, usage is equal to zero as well. So now we need to get a reference to the actual power manager. So let's do power usage graphic, power usage graphic. Let's grab that at start. So we'll come on down here. It's equal to find object of type. There's only going to be one in our scene, so we can use this method for it. We have a hold of it now. So power usage graphic. Oops. Let's come on down here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is if the charge drops down, we're going to want to tell the power usage graphic dot set bars to zero because there will be no usage when power runs out. Next thing is during use power, we're going to want to pass to that our usage itself. And then we're going to want to do the same thing down here, dot set bars usage. There we are. And because I made a glitch, let's do this real quick. Copy and paste. There we are. So power manager is responsible for telling the usage graphic, hey, what our current usage actually is. And usage graphic will then update the number of bars that are visible on the screen based on it. Let's go see if this actually works. All right, so something interesting here. I'm wondering if it's not possible to find this object because it's potentially not active during the start phase of things. And I'm wondering if that has something to do with the controller not actually being seen at that time. Uh, therefore, what I might want to do for the moment is just pass it in by reference. Uh, that's just going to be a little bit easier for me to deal with in terms of finding the object when I actually need it. And it's going to be a test to see if that's the real reason why this crap won't work. So let's do a public usage graphic and let's get rid of this stuff right here. This is interesting. It's inter important stuff to know when you're dealing with Vive uh, because I was looking over a lot of the documentation re recently. Not the documentation so much as I just playing around with different things and I realized there's some very important initialization steps that probably need to be uh, adhered to to make things work properly. So here's usage graphics. Let's find the power manager, which is right there. And let's grab the usage graphic object over there, associate it, and hit run really quick. There we are. Let's do a test now and see if anything pops up. Press something and there our bar increases. Press it again, and our bar increases by two. Not bad. Oh, and of course, there we just ran out of power, and we of course have nothing left. So I, I've cut this video to uh, reduce the amount of time that I was trying to debug that issue. But it looks like the Vive controller itself, uh, because it was not active, I of course could not find the object in the game. That causes some real concern. I'm worried that if a Vive controller is lost from tracking that I need to make sure I come up with some sort of a system that contains the objects that would have been lost. So I, I don't think I can directly attach things to these Vive controllers anymore. I think what I really need to do is um, keep them external from it. I, just something to think about. Literally, I lost probably the last 15 minutes trying to figure out why I couldn't grab this object. And it seems like it's because the controller itself was not, well, currently enabled. It wasn't something I could work with. But anyway, that's this video. So we got power usage working properly. In the next video, we're going to start jumping into the waypoint system and making all that stuff work. Thanks, everyone. Hope you had a good time. So long. Bye.